Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'll be going over my fourth round game, or the final round, of the sixth Lake Erie Go tournament. Now my opponent, Feifan Jia. Um, we have a bit of a history. Um, I would consider him my rival uh, in Ohio. Um, so going back two years, we, we first played in a tournament that I actually uh, beat him in. Uh, it was a very close game. He, met, he missed an end game sequence that I was able to um, see. So I was able to beat him there and win the tournament. But ever since then, whenever we've met in tournament, he has beaten me. And usually, um, it's they weren't super close. I think one of the games was like 12-point games. was a 12-point game. But the other games, I believe, were res resignations. So um, I definitely wanted to try my best in this game. And I had specifically been studying expecting um, to play Feifan in tournament because um, he had said that he was coming um, prior to the event um, and to add more drama if you will um, this is his last tournament um, in Ohio because he was a student at OSU the Ohio State University but since he's graduating this fall he's moving back to China because um, he's originally from China. So this is going to be my last chance to play him in tournament. And while I cannot get a winning record, because our record was 3-1, and one, or 1-3, one and three, 3 for him, 1 win for me, um, I wouldn't be able to, you know, have a winning record, but I can at least have 2 wins on the board instead of 3. Um, and surprisingly, my opponent last round, Michael Stevenson, he actually beat Feifan in the first round of the tournament. So both Feifan and I are 2-1. and one, And we're basically fighting for second place in the tournament. Uh, at this point. And I say surprisingly because... Before that game that Feifan lost against Michael. I was the only person to ever take a game off of him in tournament. So he's like, whatever tournament he's gone to, he's basically swept. Um... But so me and Michael are the only people who have beaten him. And I'm trying to add a second win um, to that. So with all that being said, this game was very, um, meant a lot to me. And it was half the reason why I um, made the tournament, honestly, was because I wanted to uh, get one last chance to fight my rival Feifan. So with all that being said, let's get into the game. I am black. Feifan is white. Uh, no Comey game. Uh, another tidbit about Feifan is just before the tournament, he was one of the top active AGA Don players. Um, so I think he's like 6.9 Don or something. So he's definitely super, super strong. So he approaches and I approach. So I approach here and you'll see why. Because I was expecting him to double approach. But when you double approach and I attach... And then attached, just as the new uh, common move, is black and cut. And the point of this cut is that this move's actually a ladder breaker. So when white connects here, black can ladder this, and it goes to the stones. So if you're going to ignore this move, you should make sure you play this approach. Because um, it will give you a big advantage in the corner. And it might look like white can Atari. But even if black just Atari's and then Atari's here, the gain in the corner, <coughs> excuse me, is way too good for black. Even though white gets a Ponuki, this upper stone at 017 can be attacked, and actually this right group can still be attacked. Um, so this would definitely be good for black. So white's only option is to protect here, and then black can take. Not saying this is bad, but... Because this is like a newer variation, and Feifan himself, after the game, told me he hadn't been keeping up with AI stuff. Uh, he definitely was caught off guard. I could tell by his facial expression. He was not expecting R13. Um, so then he needs this move. He needs to Hane here to connect to stones, but Black can see outside and Sente. Now, there's a very important move on the board. Because... Because I have the ladder breaker, I might think, oh, I can double approach, maybe, or I can invade, even approach, do something. But 
Even though you have a ladder breaker, you oftentimes want to take the ladder breaker off the board. Because um, let's say I ignore. This means any move along the ladder line, white can play. So maybe white can go here. It'll force me to take. And then white can then get an advantage in the bottom left. And even... And any move here, like white can do that one. I believe even this one. Like, there's so many moves here white can play to threaten this ladder. Um, and if black just answers, you can see that now that since black cannot capture these two, two stones, they, these black cutting stones are very weak. And white would definitely gain a huge advantage. So... And even without that, this move in and of itself is Atari, and then even just extend is very big. Um, so you want to just get rid of all the Aji by just taking out the stone. So this is the Joseki continuation. He answers here, and of course I peep, um, trying to get an extra exchange. Again, he said, because um, we reviewed this after, we reviewed the game after it had finished. And he said he didn't like this one. Um, so if he wanted, if you want to play the one space jump, you need to kick first. Um, and I guess he didn't know that. Or, yeah, because he hasn't been keeping up with AI stuff. So if you want to play the one space jump, you need to kick first. Because once you kick, now black will not ever peep here. But if you just jump immediately, this peep is very annoying for white. Um, because after black slides, white really does not want to play here. Because black has already gained locally by getting this exchange in. It's a very good exchange for black to get. Um, so that's why in the game he doesn't. Again, this move looks just nor normal, but this move is technically better for white. Um, for this, Just for the safety and solidity of this group. But also, I think he can ignore, like, and defend the corner. Because playing an extension on the left side and taking a 3-3 are considered Mii. So if black takes the 3-3, white can extend. But if black takes this spot, white can take the 3-3. Um, and you can see by playing c14 first, this stone, black played a d9, is going to get under attack pretty easily. So I think this move's a little rushed. Doesn't need to play here directly. Um, so and then I could, because I can take the three three. Hane. So of course after this I expect him to double Hane, which he does. If you're going to Hane here, you need to double Hane. If you want, if you don't want to play the double Hane, you need to just extend, or jump. If you're gonna Hane, make sure you double Hane. So now I have Sente because I'm gonna treat these stones lightly. He can't really attack them too much. Um, take the other corner and you can see how the spacing here is a little uncomfortable for white because if black can get more moves there's an obvious weakness at d8 that white needs to look out for white plays here now of course black would think about defending but the upper side is not that important for either side so in the game I just I protect now, after the game, we both agreed that this is this is probably a little passive. Black should try to be a little more aggressive into the center. Uh, kind of play towards where both Moyos are. Not sure what, what specific move, but somewhere. So, something like this. This is like playing inside Black's potential Moyo. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, White takes his weakness... And again, after the game, he thought this was good, but you'll see Black has a very nice move here that I remember I learned from watching pro games. So remember, if you want to get better, always watch pro games. Uh, because I had the, the next move scouted before I played uh, here. Is this attachment. And this attachment's a very good move. Because what it's saying is that White, if you really want to put most pressure on me you need to cut this off however this forces me to play g17 um and if white answers again then i get sente again because i'm completely alive however if i just play here and white goes elsewhere you can see if 
black cuts across now because black has already played the move to live this move at g17 because black already has two eyes white does not need to play as strongly on the top white could even ignore but if white ignores here you can see black cleanly cuts through and black does not need to play g17 um, so this is a very good move it's a very good move um, does he get a few answers then I can play on the bottom again but if he doesn't answer since he's already played this move that means I have a cut now that I can look for um, so it's a big difference because it forces white to play here um, it almost forces white to play there uh, it's hard to see any other move white can play um, um, but he knows that he needs to get something in the center so he plays there so of course I cut now and he extends up this move seems a little safer um, because there is a lot of Aji in the corner and by playing here it's gonna give black a lot of options later and you'll see that um, yeah so this is definitely black's first major mistake um, I'm playing a game so far where I have I'm building a Moyo right I'm playing very Moyo heavy so I shouldn't worry about what white is building I should just worry about what I can build um, so this is definitely too worried about white's area I definitely need to play a move like this I think this was the move we both agreed on it was decent and I kind of want to like invite white into the air into my area because of course if we just you know draw a line down the board obviously it blacks area here on the bottom and on the right is bigger than black whites left side so uh, and black again black can do something like this even so this kind of gives white a target and it's kind of blacks kind of just throwing his um, game plan out the window all of a sudden even though it's a perfectly fine uh, game position still so white makes this exchange this is a costly exchange because it forces black to go here like later white can um, invade potentially but the reason why he goes here is because he's setting up this cap without this exchange here and white just plays there you can see that when white plays here now black can either just extend out and now the j9 white stone that was the cap is um, kind of not doing much and black can even maybe peep first um, and if white connects black can even then come back um, and with these exchanges black is completely connected or there's no way white can seal black in if white goes there you can see there's nothing uh, something like this nothing so this is a good order of moves but it is costly because black black's very happy getting h4 and makes l4 a very good move actually caps then invade so this move i'm looking at aji in the upper left corner because this move is sente but even if even though i have that aji in the upper left i can't live locally so i'm not sure why i played this move because he just comes down which is a, i didn't expect this move honestly i was thinking about what if he kicks what if he does this like i was thinking about those kind of moves i did not consider this move this is definitely the best move because again black cannot live locally and even playing moves like this give black more options on this side um same thing with this kick there's still weaknesses whereas this move gets rid of all of white's thickness or all of white's weaknesses so at this point i'm like okay i can't live inside so i need to get out or i exchange that and then i ha attach and then hane um white would like to be able to cut but actually this ladder you'll see is good for black um, so because of that I'm able to double Hane if I didn't make this if I didn't make this move at g15 none of this what you're about to see I or this double Hane would not work um, so in the game he Atari's I connect and then he connects can't really do anything too aggressive um, yeah if he does anything too aggressive no even 
even though black, white might be able to capture there, black would gain a lot on the bottom, actually. Um, or even black can come this way. I think black should go here first. But you can see that even though white captures those three stones, black's bottom is actually gr building on a very large scale. Um, so he wants to keep up an attack on all the stones, so he just connects. Now, I come back, and he extends. So, because going here kind of uses these stones. If I just Atari here and he blocks, even though this feels pretty good for black, all of these exchanges I've made inside are really kind of useless. So I kind of really wanted to use these stones. Plus, there's still the Aji of pulling this stone out and then attacking the upper side. So I honestly don't know which one's better, um, but I decided to go here. But that means now I can attack. I can be attacked. So it's definitely, it might be greedy. So I play at the shape point here, and he extends, which is a very annoying move. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very annoying. Because I could have exchanged um, this move first in Sente. Uh, even if he plays here first. Um, Black is... Shape here is pretty good, actually. And there's still a ton of Aji in the corner. Um... It might be a little risky though, but I'm not sure. Go there. Into maybe that. I don't know. This would be a different game though. Um, but just letting white be able to capture this stone means this move is not that valuable. Oops. Uh, this move isn't that valuable. Even just going here, I think, is better. So this move I definitely played too quickly. I just kind of like, oh, he kind of has to answer here or do something like that. But uh, this move's definitely good because it helps cut off the C12 stone from the center stones. So I push through, push through, he hanes, and then I extend. I can't keep going after the top, of course, because he can capture the center. So I need to play here. But I have cut off the three stones at least. He extends. I extend back. I really wanted this move. Uh, again, I'm not sure. Maybe white can just block here. Because point-wise, that move is huge. But I guess this move is also huge. So I guess white still wants to attack the whole thing. But I get to extend. He needs to block. And then I can connect. Plays there. And then I extend. Um, yeah. Extend. And then I block. Um, yeah, I didn't know which way to block. Because um, it le still leaves Aji here. But if I go here, it still leaves Aji here. So, I wanted to protect this one because cause he does invade next. I can actually attack this group, or this stone. So I definitely handled this attack pretty poorly. <laughs> um, so I definitely should just... Um, Let's see. So one, I should exchange this now. For sure. Um, I tried to... G I was trying to preserve this, but if I'm trying to attack that stone, I should get this now. Because um, there's no way he's going to ignore it now. In the game, I went down here and White's just able to jump. But this has got to be stronger moves, I, bl I would believe. Um... I just kick and then do something like this, All right? Something, something simple. Uh, even if he um, Hane's there to try to um, just lose the tail, I can still cut, or I can even just come on this side. And he can live small on the side, maybe, but it would be pretty painful because then. Later, let's just assume white's alive. I don't know how white's alive, but let's just uh, add some stones. There, white's white's alive now. Um, I'm able to get this move and build a ton of points on the bottom. So, yeah, this move is too soft because he can't live in the corner, anyways. So, but my plan was when he jumps, I was gonna play here. So that's this was my plan. Um, I think it could have worked out. 
The issue is I need to deal with these, though. These stones. Ahane. And then he invades. I have to block on top. And then he um, extends. I play this move, which looks like a strange exchange, but I really didn't want to see white coming across here and being able to do cut. Because it's going to help his shape a lot and hurt my shape a lot. So I really didn't want that exchange. So even though this move might be vulgar, I really didn't want that jump across. The game, though, he attaches. Um, and I, th I Hane, but I think... So if I push through, he's going to... Um, wedge. But even if he does that, why would I care if he can connect back? It would be Gote and I would gain a lot in the center. So maybe I shouldn't have been. Yeah, I should have just pushed through. Um, but my result was still decent, but it could have been better. Um, yeah. He also said, Feifan did that. It was fine to just go here because my shape is better and white still cannot connect because these moves are still sente and black can still jump across or even do this first. So, yeah, my I was thought I was being more aggressive, like that that was good, but I don't think it was. Yeah, definitely just jump. My shape would have been so much better. This is kind of going to be like the last fight on the board. Yeah, I just Hane, and then he Hane. So now we're basically an end game because all no more fighting. I guess the top is still undecided, but um, in general now we're just playing end game. He plays there. I have to fix, and then he fixes, dive, and then play here. So I find I get the probably the biggest move on the board. He can uh, bump. I can extend up and then you can Atari, connect, extend up. He needs to fix because if he doesn't fix, this cut actually works for black. Um, you can see that this will eventually be an Atari. Uh, and then white would be cut off. So he needs to protect. I extend down, this move's huge. It, he does get that move though. Um, I can extend down. Extend here. This prevents this clamp where he can capture the stone at b5. And it's probably Sente for him. Or it's probably Sente for me to answer. Now I play here. Try to make points on the bottom. He extends this move. When I saw it, it was much bigger than I thought it was because I didn't see that it was Sente. Because uh, if I ignore, he can uh, push and cut. So I did not see that it was Sente. Otherwise, I probably should play this one. So I need to connect. Clamp. Connect. And then jump. He cannot um, cut here. Push. We're just kind of in endgame. I really wish I had got this move, though. Because it's such a big move. And it's definitely Sente. Like, where? Here. Like, just play this move. And be happy. Um, yeah, this was... I, th I don't know why I didn't take Sente. Oops, he didn't do that first. So Hane. And then he even gets this move. But I got this Atari. Atari, Hane. So I Hane and then I ignore because I realize connecting isn't Sente yet. Because if he ignores, even though I can Atari and cut, he can just Atari down this way. So, yeah. That's why I just left it because I needed to. Uh, it's Gote. Uh, he plays here. Now, this move's fine, but he needs to then exchange this move. Because. Black cannot Hane here because white can push down immediately and black cannot save the stones. But once white exchanges this move with this move, you can see now uh, white connected. Um, you can see now when I Hane, now I'm protected because I was able to play B2. 
So he lost a lot, some points here. Um, Tiger's Mouth, Hane, this move's big. And White plays down. So this move's actually kind of tricky because if White just answers here, Black can still attach, and you can see he can reduce a lot in the corner. But if White plays here, Black can get a Ko. So this move keeps the most points in the corner, but it's Gote. And you can see if white just ignores, then black is able to get a lot of sente. So uh, he plays here. Connect, pushes down, block. B2 bomber. Atari. So we're really just an end game. But as we're getting closer and closer to the end, I'm realizing even though this bottom's big, I am actually behind. Like I am behind in the game. Um, yeah, it's really just have end game. This move's big because he can wedge next, and I have to pull back. Cause Atari. Um, yeah, just just end game. There's one little thing in end game I want to mention. Uh, this move is actually a very good move, um, as opposed to playing here, and then trying to go like this. You can see White can just take out the eye. But by playing here directly, if White takes out the eye, I can Atari. And you can see I can reduce white on, on this side. So white probably doesn't want that. But if white just protects it, I can then cut. And then make an eye. And if white protects here, I can block and threatening to, to take away more points or to make an eye. So this is a very good move. Sadly, don't think it means much because um, white is ahead. Where did he go? Oh, he went here. White is ahead, so yeah. And it was funny. I was counting, and my ba my main issue when f with my go is I'm very lazy counter during like middle game. Um, I'll just kind of eyeball areas as opposed to actually count areas. Um, but once it gets into end game, I try to count more seriously, and I knew I was behind. Now, what was funny was he was holding stone stones the whole game, and right around. Let me try to... I think around, like, right here was when he had the stones in his hands. He, I looked at him, and he, like, nodded to himself and threw the, his stones in his hand into the bowl. And that's that's when I knew I can't win this game because, <laughs> yeah, I... And I did count that I was behind, so I wasn't, like... it's it, That was more of a... That was a joke, but still. Um, yeah. And I even played some moves here to try to make... Some sort of end game shenanigans here. Atari, Atari. Into here, but it doesn't quite work. White has just one too many liberties. Uh, so yeah, I think after this point, I resign. Now, it was weird, because after the game, we had counted. Or, like, I asked him. It was, like, a few points, right? He's like, yeah, it's, like, two points. Um, but actually, it's more than that. Like, it was two points. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'll take that. You know, most of my games were res resignations, and it was a close game, blah, blah, blah. But when I counted the game using, like, a software, it had white by nine. And I was like, is it really that much? Wow. Our, was our counting really that off? Um, again, it was, we were under pressure, time pressure, but still. Yeah, so I ended up, I resigned, but, uh, the end result is white's ahead by nine on the board. Um. It's definitely better than my other games with him. So I'm definitely happy with this game. Um, it's just sad that I went... Um, I'm 1-4 and four against him. And I was able to win the first one. So it's definitely a very strong opponent. Very, very strong. Um, I'm going to miss playing games with him. Now what's cool though is... We exchanged our Fox um, account names. So that we're friends on Fox Go server now. So maybe I'll actually play him on the Fox Go online game series at some point um but yeah Fafon won so he ended up getting second in the division so the results one i'll post the aj article on the about the tournament in the video description i'll also have the game record of this game and first place at the tournament was michael stevenson second place with Fafon jia and third place was richard key good job richard i'm really proud of you uh thank you for coming to the tournament um, and congrats, Michael, for uh, going undefeated 4-0. Uh, 
the Q division, um, David Rossling came first place. I believe that's a repeat first place uh, for him. Second place was Manny Huaregi, uh, up and coming Q player in the Cleveland area. And then third place was Steve Zilber, the Cleveland Go Club president. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for coming out um, to the tournament who did come. Thank you for watching my review series on this tournament. Hopefully you learned something. Um, and I also want to say a special thank you to Feifan for pushing me um, to testing my abilities and for making me want to grow stronger every day. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about the game, please let me know in the comments. Um, oh yeah, before that, I th so where did the game go awry for Black? I think I handled this, this center situation where I, when I invaded as opposed to build my own area was definitely bad and how I handled attacking White's invasion on the right side. Those were both very poorly executed. So that, that I think that's when um, things went bad for Black. Black was definitely leading in the opening. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.